So, uh, Karen, great to see you, and thanks very much for coming on the, the Fever Stand. Now, here we are at the Goodwood Revival, the world's premier historic motor racing event, but outside of those kind of elite events, what, what interest do you have in uh, historic vehicles and, uh, and preservation? Well, listen, I think we're very fortunate in our sport. Uh, we have a huge history and a huge heritage, um, you know, going back over 100 years, and I think it's important to embrace that. Uh, you know, we're seeing a huge amount of technological changes out in the real world, and that's going to have an impact in the motor racing world as well. So I think, um, you know, we're, we're, at a, we're at a precipice in so many ways in terms of where does the automobile industry and the automotive world go. But I think equally it's so important to preserve the past and to make sure that as we go into the past, we can still, as we go into the future, we can still, you know, enjoy and embrace these wonderful machines from the past. And it, it is an industry under threat to some extent. I mean, the current generation are, are obviously you know, less interested in, in, in the older vehicles. Any, any ideas of how we can get the next generation more, more engaged in the past, as, as you say? Yeah, listen, I think, you know, we've got, there are unquestionably ex- existential threats to the, to the sport. You know, we have to recognize that. Um, you know, and I think the, the way to counter that is to create a sustainable future. You know, we saw, for example, um, I do a lot of work with Williams Heritage, and earlier this year, we converted Nigel Mansell's championship winning car from 92 to, uh, 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 to be able to run on fully sustainable fuels. So it ran on completely fossil-free fuels. It still made all the noise. It still went just as quickly. It still revved to 15,000 RPM. Uh, and Sebastian Vettel drove it to the British Grand Prix. So, uh, and I think that's where we have to be um, finding this balancing act of ensuring that the cars from the past are able to run on fuels which are green and are sustainable for the future. Yeah, so it's a controversial subject. I mean, the purists would say that a car would have to have not, not, not electronic ignition, have to have points and have to run on old-style fuels, but you'd be a proponent of perhaps some, some modernization to, uh, to, to keep those cars running and to keep them, keep them available. I, I'm a pragmatist, and I, you know, I think I, I'm, I'm realistic in terms of where the world is going, and you know, while of course I'd love to see cars from the, the 40s and 50s remain there in their original state as much as um, the world allows, we have to recognize that in 15 years' time they may not get fuel to run it. And I would much rather see a car run, you know, out, out and about on whatever fuel is available at that time rather than be parked up at the collector's. Uh, museum and not running and not being shown off to the world. So I appreciate I, I might be um, in, in somewhat of a minority, especially um, you know with, with people involved in the historic world. But you know my my personal view is I, I love to come to events like Goodwood because we get to see these cars run. I don't want to see them statically displayed because. Um, you know, the, you, so much of the joy is hearing the engines and seeing seeing how the things work uh, and seeing them out and about. And, and going back to my other other question, trying to engage the, the, the younger generation. So many uh, younger generation, they, they don't even drive at all and have so much le- less interest in cars. Any any ideas of how we can sort of br- bring them into the fold? I think it's a very fair point. You know, I, I am concerned that as we go into the future people aren't going to own cars anymore. You know, they're going to be doing ride shares and they're going to be, uh, you know, using a pool of cars rather than owning anything. So we, we've got to somehow try and educate people about the joy of driving. Um, and so much of it is to do with the roads and, you know, being able to to enjoy just driving a car without being stuck in traffic and, uh, you know, crawling along on the M25 or something like that. So um, I think, and also events like this, you know, I bring my kids here because I want them to come and see what wonderful cars were produced in the past and 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 embrace it. And yeah, we, ju- we just hope enough younger people are inspired by these kinds of events to actually, as, as you say, em- embrace it and, uh, and get that next generation engaged. Yeah, exactly. And it's a real problem. You know, uh, we, we see it in the motorsport world as well. H- how do we ensure that kids are, are interested and want to want to go out? I think what we have to accept is my generation, you know, I was born in 1984, my generation was the last one who probably grew up going to a workshop. My dad ran a garage, um, and I'm probably the last generation that went and 
use my hands to take apart a gearbox and take apart drive shafts and so see how it all works. That's gone now with the way modern cars are. People don't take their own cars apart anymore. They go and it's all done electronically. And so, putting that aside, how do we still then cultivate this culture of enjoying the motor car and enjoying the the engineering side of it? And it's it's a real challenge, right? Because the kids, you know, so many of the teenagers today, they all want to invent the next app. They all want to create the next Uber, the next Amazon. Um, so I, I I do worry that people don't want to be engineers people don't want to design gearboxes or dampers or suspension mm-hmm. um and i feel like it's it's on all of us who who are in this industry to try and still instill a a sense of appreciation amongst the next generation sure well we're, we're all doing our bit for that cause uh, this weekend at goodwood so i can uh, thank you very much uh, great to great to have you on the stand thank you very much thank you my pleasure thank you